Hey folks, welcome back to the channel, and I'm here at Orange County, um, MGJ, my home base airport here in Orange County, New York. Um, what you see behind me here is my Mooney M20C Ranger, and I decided today to go over some stuff, um, what the airplane's about, uh, what it looks like, everybody knows what it looks like, and what to look for in a walk around, um, and stuff of that nature, and kind of take in the cockpit again, everybody knows what it looks like. but. We'll take it one step at a time. I do get a lot of emails on a couple of things I want to go over um, with people. And stick around and let me know what you think. And also, if you have any other questions, you can put on the comments below or you can email me at pilotfun101 at gmail.com. So stick around. Okay folks, well, right here is my 1968 Mooney M20C Ranger, um, and it's a Johnson bar, which will go over that for my gear, and I do have uh, manual flaps, so nothing's electric, no electric gear or flaps, um, so it's a very easy airplane to uh, uh, use when it comes to gear and when it comes to the flaps so uh, nothing can really go wrong but then again you never know um, but here's the front of the airplane um, the prop I have uh, I do not have to have a one hour 100 hour AD um, the hub was tra uh, changed over um, I forget back what year it was the previous owner did that but if you have the original hub um, on these airplanes there's AD every hundred hours you got to do a test to make sure nothing is cracked um, I forget how they do it exactly I think they put um, electric current through it and make sure nothing's leaking but that does not have to be done on this airplane um, so just do a quick walk around uh, your typical Mooney and this I, I have the positive control this is no longer I have no vacuum pump but I'll take that off at some point um, and then of course the gear doors very simple gear doors and in front of the airplane is your oil cooler I do have an LED landing light works very very well I'm um, at night um, it, it brightens up the runway when you're about even a half a mile away you can kind of see it coming in to play okay we'll keep walking around here you have a stall horn indicator is right here Always checked out and walk around. Of course, my pedo uh, tube is covered right now. We're not going flying right this second here. And I do have an LED light and I have a strobe um, for the strobe lights. Um, positioning lights is an LED, which I'll eventually change that over to all LED. And one thing you want to check about on a walk around is make sure everything here is connected. The bolts are in the right spot, nothing is loose, nothing has gotten loosened. Um, last thing you need is something like this working its way out, which it shouldn't, but you never know. That's why you do a walk around. Okay, These are, there's three of them on the aileron here. Another one right here. 
and another one right here. So you want to check all that on our walk around, make sure nothing is damaged. Um, obviously, if you don't push or touch anything on these, you don't want these dent very, could dent very easily. And the last thing you want to do is ruin your aerodynamics on your airplane. Uh, and these are not cheap to, to get. And of course, here's your flaps. And if you notice, um, the, you can't really tell, but you put the aileron up or down, um, you can't tell in the video, but the uh, rudder also moves. So in the Mooney, uh, when you use left or right rudder, the aileron works together with their rudder uh, to make an easier turn, and a much smoother turn actually, than just using uh, your rudder and turning in the aileron. So it kind of does those two things for you, which is pretty nice, and the Mooney has that, you know, as even the new Moonies today had the same uh, technology using that. And everything in a Mooney, and I'll show you in a tail, is push rods. So there's there's no pulleys or, or wires or anything like that to worry about. Uh, electronic door, then an inspection door to check the tail for corrosion, all that fun stuff. My uh, remote transponder is in here. On the other side, I'll show you that. And this little metal a knob right here i guess you would call it whatever is uh avidyne's um uh thermometer for the uh the wind uh, i'm sorry for the um outside air temperature when you're flying so this works off this is, works on the dynon skyview hdx and that's where they get their um temperature outside temperature another inspection door right there and again, you want to check these bolts again when you walk around, make sure everything is good. There's three of them here as well. Okay. And you always check these. Actually, there's four. I'm sorry, there's four of them on a vertical stabilizer here. And then, of course, on the rudder, you have one here, one up here. And one all the way up at the top there, I check on my stool that I have. Uh, but that's that. And check, make sure it's, nothing's loose. And here's a push rod. I'm kind of, it's hard to see, but here's a push rod I'm kind of talking about. Um, everything is push rods in the Mooney. Um, but you want to check again these bolts, make sure everything is tight. And down in here, you can also see the push rods on this side. I need better on this side. Yeah. And you always want to check, make sure nothing is loosened or working its way out as well. And you always check that. Very important. Um, and then on, again, this side is the same thing. Okay, check all those. And then this is where they, I'm going to get this painted a little bit better at some point when I do some touch-up spots. Um, this is where the um, remote transponder is on this side of the airplane. So they added these two in here and riveted it all in. So that's where the transponder is. And again, another inspection door and another inspection door right here and this is where the gopro goes underneath the plane in my videos we'll work our way over here this is a uh, obviously vor antennas antennas and then of course the, the, the dynon and garmin i'm sorry the dynon and uh, avidyne 540s it's antennas and one on the top as well and this is one of the things i really don't like about the moon to be honest is the air intake here for the passengers and for me um, there's one pulley up front to get the air from the front but this is on the top of the ceiling and i'll go in the cockpit and show you that so this raises up the problem is is that you know they do break um i can raise it higher but you see this little there's a little um uh you really can't see i don't think but there's a little uh metal uh, rod in there of some sort um that could break and this one already broke believe it or not so uh it's it's what happens is in flight and when it broke in flight it actually you can't i don't know if you can tell or not but it kind of cracked the paint right here um and what happened was when it was up that piece of uh metal wire that holds this together broke it was the original and this piece flapped over and smacked against the uh cut the fuselage here um and it made a big huge sound 
um, like I thought something broke in the airplane um, and I realized one of my friends told me before this issue happened is to watch out for this because when they do break it sounds like something broke on the airplane um, and I realized after a couple minutes of trying to troubleshoot some stuff make sure everything is working I realized that you know what I think this broke when I landed it was broken so that's the only thing I don't like and a matter of fact I'll raise it up for you so you can see it a little bit better while we're out here but that air intake uh, let's air come through these Okay, and also in the back here see there's two back here and right here is where you kind of raise it As you can see it's raising So this little this little wire right here um, Holds this together and when you're going you know 145 knots and, and or faster descending, you know, it's a lot of strain on this um, so you know, I just don't, kind of don't like that in a way, but I mean, it works, but when this thing snaps back going 180 miles an hour or whatever, it's loud. And unfortunately it did crack my paint a couple years back. Um, so that's one little thing I don't like. The new ones don't have that, um, but it's fine for now. And of course, everybody knows the cargo doors, um, they, can, they can break off. So you always gotta make sure that you close these. I know sometimes we're all, in a rush and we're looking to do go places and we forget a couple of things but when you do your when you do your last minute walk around before you before you get into the plane is always check that this is locked and closed and you know some guys and i'm guilty of it you know i caught myself and that's why we do checklists and, and make sure everything is good is you close it you get distracted the phone rings your passengers are coming and you're trying to get things and water and go back in the in you know in the in the hangar and you don't realize that this is still like this and when you take off and this is gonna open up and on takeoff it might not break off um, but you know the last thing you need is this going up when you're takeoff and you got to abort takeoff or if it stays down while you're in flight and you get up high enough you go faster this will tear off in flight and if that tears off it's gonna blow you know blow back it could hit anything back here and you can have a really really bad day and that's the last thing you want is having an accident over something so stupid so you always make sure your last minute walk around is always check this door and make sure it's down and what i do for extra security is just lock it this way it's really down and locked and secure it's a great it was a great idea i love the idea of having a door right here because it's really cool to get things in and out pretty easy and quickly but always make sure that that door is locked and secure and take your time, folks. I'm doing a last minute walk around. Um, you, you do your initial walk around. That usually takes me about 10 minutes to check everything like I just went over, checking the oil, checking all the odds and ends. And I also just make sure thing is put in here. But also your last minute walk around, I mean, we have a last minute walk around. Before any passengers or yourself gets in the airplane, just do another quick walk around uh, visually and make sure that you didn't forget to close the dipstick i've done that before lucky i caught it on my last minute walk around i'm being honest with you i have nothing to hide but make sure that dipstick is tightened the door is locked on the on the oil and then make sure this door is locked and secure very very important um, and then of course the baggage area can hold up to 120 pounds and it's pretty big back here um you know so it, there's the back passengers the seats are all the way back as far as they can go that's why there's no room there but you put the seats up pretty far um, you can fit you know four adults pretty comfortably in the back of a, a ranger but you do have to put your seats up um, a little bit further in the front two seats and honestly folks how many times do you really have four passengers four passengers in your airplane if you do if you carry a lot of passengers all the time you want a little bit more room uh just look at a, a mooney 201 the j models they have give you more room in the back uh, it's like a mid-body kind of extension that might be best for you but for me the ranger is awesome um so of course it's the other wing i mean you know it's that's uh, pretty self-explanatory air gas caps um and then let's go inside real quick and then we'll go back outside actually let's go back out let's keep going outside for now folks and then we we'll go inside but i want to show you these gas caps another very important thing that you want to do is make sure when you're getting gas is that wait for this car to go by is that you make sure and i've done this also is make sure these are locked and secure and, and it was locked but the, the, the the issue that sometimes you might have is you might put this on and here's the gas cap um, there's a, a 
and get this gas out of here so it doesn't leak all over my paint here. Um, I don't know if you can see or not, but there's a, there is a rubber right there. It's like a rubber um, seal that you want to make sure you change that uh, every year. They're very inexpensive. Um, and mine was just changed on my annual. But this rubber can get dry rotted after a while and fuel can leak out and i had that problem i think on a video uh last year about it leaking out i thought i lost a cap initially when i saw the, the um the fuel pouring out only because they also overfilled it too but you want to put it down make sure it's level here and not like this you see how it's it's cocked a little bit here you can still close it okay and lock it well okay the problem is is that it's not sealed 100 percent. you might lose your cap so you always make sure this is nice you know get it in here make sure it's level make sure it's even you know jiggle around a little bit it, and now i can tell it's nice and tight and then all you do is you lock this up and it pulls that bottom piece up um and along with that um uh, rubber seal it will pull that up and it'll lock that into place and now you know it's not it's on right and straight um but if you have it if it's a little bit off uh fuel will come out and the last thing you want to do is lose a gas cap that again that could hit your stabilizer or anything like that in the back of rudder and cause some damage you know when you're going 150 miles an hour so this is the other air intake that i get this is this comes out of the two side vents um by the, by the passenger's right leg and in my left leg there and then also um uh that's for the i'm sorry that's for the front you know air vents which i usually lose always leave open except for in the winter time and then the top vent that we, we just discussed uh that is on top of me as well and also for the back passengers so here is the all the avionics in here which is they, they open them up every year um and seal them every year to make sure everything is checked with the avionics so the 201 or the mod for the windshield you can do it on this as well is basically the windshield comes down like this okay and it kind of stops right about here covering all this and uh avionics guys don't like that they like they rather really have the, the 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 easy access doors like this and just go right into what they have to do and it's a lot easier for them uh trust me they, they told me a hundred times but there's two doors i mean there's two spots here here that comes off and the other side comes off and they they, they love work on the avionics that way because they're not really in the cockpit on top of everything and taking the whole uh stuff off to get to the avionics or in the back of the avionics i should say so that's what this these doors are here for and this is the oil and this is what i was telling you about is you know i, I love these latches by the way but you, you know I, what i do is as you can see right now i have the cap off and what i do is after every flight um, i park the airplane i open up the hatch okay the oil hatch here and i unscrew the um dipstick here and the reason why is all that um heat and and it just evaporates you know instead of kind of evaporating inside itself i know it's probably a myth i don't know but i always know the old timers always told me hey when you park the airplane unscrew the um oil cap and let that moisture evaporate instead of evaporating well it's not really evaporating it's inside just i guess just laying inside the engine i don't know <laughs> but so that's what i do uh you listen to the old timers i know and they're, they're, they've been there and done that a thousand times over so that's what i do and that's what you want to make sure even when you're checking the oil you know and make sure you always close it you know and um actually i can close it now because it's cooled off i flew it yesterday and then of course you make sure these are locked and secure and honestly there's a couple times again that i caught myself with these open you know again you're, you're checking your oil you're closing everything up you get you know somebody talks to you, your phone rings and then you leave it like that and you know if you leave it like that you take off it's going to blow open um and also make sure that this is closed in your last minute check because then you're going to have oil pouring inside the engine and it's not going to be a good day for you uh so you make sure these are closed now i've caught myself once with these open on my last minute walk around and of course the exhaust and the gear um these are you know we call them pancakes but that's basically your suspension in the mooney uh it's a, it's a hard ride it's bouncy um so when you're taxiing you got to be very careful and of course the gear door so that basically determines almost your gear speed really is to make sure the gear door don't fly off but then also 
I want to show you this. You know, the, the Moonies, as you can see, they sit very aggressive. They're very low to the ground. It's an aggressive look. It doesn't look like your typical airplane, so it's really cool and aggressive looking. But, hey, Hans. Uh, but the reason why you gotta be careful when you're taxiing is you put this prop, don't worry, the keys, that's another thing, you put the keys in the window knowing that nothing is hot here. So you put the prop up and down here, okay, right there. Look at the, look at the ground clearance. It's, and I, oh, I can't really have anything to, but here's my hand, you know. Look at the ground clearance here. It's not that much. It's probably, I want to say, maybe uh, seven, six inches. If I had a ruler, I would really get exactly what it is. So when you're taxiing, you know, you, it's hard to tell on the camera, but look at that front tire. It's pretty low to the ground. So you got to be very careful um, when you're taxiing a Mooney not to, you know, so, you know, some of these taxiways are rough and some of these runways are rough. So you really want to Put, when you're taxing as much back pressure as you can to keep that nose from getting low and when you're taxing on a rough taxiway and there's a couple airports around here that are rough taxiways there's like dips in them and sinkholes you go slow the last thing you need is to have a prop strike on taxiing and that's another downfall of the Mooney is how low it sits to the ground it looks awesome looks aggressive um, but you got to be careful taxiing and if you're using a grass strip and it's not cut or trimmed you know nicely you'd be cutting grass with it <laughs> so you know that's a couple of the other downfalls is that it's the prop is pretty low to the ground so i mean it's not a really a downfall because you know you should be taxiing slow anyway um but you know that's one of the oh, really quickly here this is my plug so i know i've got to tell you guys i'll probably get questions on it this is what I plug everything in. Every cylinder, you can't see it. If I had the whole cowling off, I would show it to you. Every cylinder is wrapped uh, in the oil pan, has a, has a pad. So when I plug this airplane in and I cover it with that cover and cover the props, it stays at a really, really good temperature uh, in the wintertime. So all I got to do is really unplug the airplane, take the blanket off it, um, and then, you know, start it up. And I don't have to wait around, you know, 40 minutes, 45 minutes you know, doing all the, the propane stuff and, you know, putting the, uh, you know, the, the air into the engine, waiting and waiting and waiting. I keep it plugged in all winter and all I do is I start it up and it's almost in the green when it, that's how hot the, the engine stays. Uh, so, I, you know, when I start it up, it's almost in the green, but then I let it sit for about a couple minutes, let it warm up obviously all the way. But if you have an opportunity to do something like that and you live in a cold area, like I do when it gets winter, it gets pretty cold. Awesome thing to do because you don't have to waste your time with propane and gas and waiting 45 minutes to an hour for it to get really cold. I'm sorry, to get really warm. Plug it in, you're done. You get in the airplane, you take everything off, you get in the airplane, you taxi, you're done. So that's, that's basically the outside of the airplane. I don't think I forgot anything um, right now. And of course, Here's the little dent I got a couple years back. You can't really tell. I mean, you can. The little dent right here, I hit a geese on short final on, I think it was a, a three. I'm sorry, two, one at the time. Uh, now it's two, two, and four. It used to be two, one, and three, that run away. But it came in at night, and I just missed a whole flock. It was at nighttime that the, uh, the LED light saw them all, and I just missed the last one and hit it, and there was blood all over the place. And luckily, it didn't ruin my pedo tube here. That would have been a mess. But just nipped it. Um, but that's on a video I have. I think it says bird strike on it. And of course, folks, here's the other gas cap and you're probably saying what are these right what i do is i'm going to go and get those two things for you and i'll show you exactly what they are for and everybody knows this is just at night to make sure to, i can tell the strobes are working and the lights are actually working um but let's see here let me find that so when i go to the beach okay um, for the day or overnight, you know, I don't want any moisture You know kind of or if it's a little bit of a raining day. I don't really don't want the moisture to kind of sit 
on here um, because then again you're supposed to I do sub you know the tanks you know there's there's two little um, test points you can push up and in and then it drains of the water uh, the, the fuel make sure there's no water in it um, but you know water can sit up in here and it can leak through okay um, especially if it's raining really hard a moisture or uh, you know the stuff during the dew during the during the night time so what I did do here is I have this not sure where where I got it or where, where actually the, the previous owner got them from I can look I can try to get that for you if you're interested let me know in the comments below if you're interested I'll try to get that information for you but there's a nice foam coating around the whole outside that is obviously to, to keep it not blowing off and it's plastic on the outside here and all I do is I take it and I line it up and snap it right in so then what it does is the water won't get in there so it stays nice and the wind won't take it out it's, it's in pretty secure and that's what those two things are I've gotten some questions about that in, in the previous emails um, but now it's on video here and that's what it, that's those do and the same thing on the other side um, same concept here this piece this little notch faces that way but yeah same thing and that's it this way nothing gets in to your tanks and or sits up in here you know or when you're pulling the cap off the water then dumps in but this kind of blocks the water you know from getting in there the dew all that stuff so that's what that's for So we'll head inside put that back over here so I don't lose anything and this is for my new carburetor I just got the new carburetor it works awesome okay and there's the, the Dynon antenna so now as you can see I have a pillow here and the reason the reason behind that is um, I went with the basically a 1969 ranger um panel to fit this kind of equipment in here um i have a dynon two dynon skyview hdx's 10 inch and one on the right side and left side and that's the dynon's backup e 10 a that's for backup and i have of course the um avidon 540 ifd the um pc the ps um audio panel Okay, which worked really well, and I kept the SL30, and the reason behind that is I wanted two nav units, um, and not just a nav and a comm. So I have a nav and comm below, nav and a comm above, and this is a really nice unit. And then, of course, the other 10-inch screen. And so the reason behind all that was because I couldn't fit it all if I didn't go a little bit higher. So it was a couple inches higher than my old panel is, so I had to kind of use a pillow to see... I, oh, I can see over it, but I like to see over it like this, not like this. Um, so it's really preference on my part. So what I'm going to do next annual is put some more foam in the seat here and raise it up a little bit. And that's what uh, my buddy has a 1969 Mooney. And his seats are actually a little bit taller than mine, probably because of that reason. So and here you have all my fuses. And you're probably saying, why do I have two ports for the USB? Because right here, I gotta, I gotta clean this up here in this. But here's a Johnson bar. So if I had an iPad or my phone was charging, I didn't want the wire to run from here to here, okay, or to here. And if I want to put the gear down, it, the wires are all in the way. And vice versa on my side, I didn't want to have um, passengers trying to charge their phone and having wires from over there coming across the panel, okay, and down, or kind of going underneath and are over here and then it can't get the Johnson's bar down or up you know and not paying attention it, it could cause a problem so that's why I have two USB ports one on this side and one on the other side and of course all my fuses were moved so and then I of course to push the talk on the pilot or the co-pilot side so other than that here's a Johnson's bar and everybody's you know the Johnson's bar is weird it's the other way around you, you would think up is your gear up and down is your gear down, but it's the opposite. So the gear's up right now, and all you do is when you, when you depart, 
I'm sorry, the gear is down. I hope the gear is not, not, not up, uh, right, up right now. The gear is down. And see, it's already confusing me. So all you do is you take off um, about 80 miles an hour. Above 80 miles an hour, folks, is your is is best. I'm sure other uh, Johnson bar pilots would probably tell you the same thing. It's easier to put down the gear up when the plane's under 80 miles an hour. But all you do is you push this button right here bring it down and it folds right down get this out of the way it folds right down to this bracket right here and it snaps right in you're done so the only thing is in this area when you're on takeoff and when you're on landing you want to check this area to make sure nothing is in the way cell phone laying on there or whatever it could be it because then you, then you won't be able to get the gear down flush and it could break something it could break your phone or whatever and then you have to try to move things out of the way pretty quickly to, to get it the gear to be locked um, and then here is of course my indicators for takeoff flaps I'm sorry takeoff trim and then takeoff flaps is another indicator right here you bring this little ridge thingy down here you are in uh, takeoff flaps and the same thing on trim right here and of course this is your flap so all you do is you see it says up and down right here you push this down Okay, and then you pull this up and pump it. And as you can see, the gear will go down. And then you push it up and the gears of the flaps are up. I'm sorry, the flaps. So that's basically the interior. Um, I did move these boxes were down on the on the panel and moved them over here. I don't see anything on the passenger side. And these are extra air tubes that come in for fresh air on this side and the passenger side. And the only thing I again I always talk about this is the fuel selector on the floor. Um, it's this difficult because when you're in flight, you got to take your um, you know shoulder, sh shoulder harness off. And you know I don't like to take seatbelts off when you're in flight, only because you never know when you might hit a bump. But it is what it is. It's fine. Um, but there is a tool that you can buy, believe it or not, and it's like a long tube. You can turn it off and on. Uh, I'm sorry, left to right when you want to. But other than that, this is basically the Mooney M20C Ranger. Um, it's it's big enough for me. I love it. It's awesome airplane. I have no regrets at all um, doing what I did here, and it is just an awesome airplane. Um, I don't really have anything else, um, but you know I'm going to show you the room in the back. So I get a lot of questions on that. So give me one second here. I'm going to move this seat up. Right now it's all the way back. It's not even locked because it's so far back. Okay, and there's obviously no room in the back, but it's not even locked in because it's just laying back there. They need for me to get out. So all you would do is. Pull the seat up and I sit right about there. Okay, so you have, uh, I, I think I'm, I'm well, maybe one more notch up. I'm not really 100% sure. I'm about six foot. So you do have some room for the back passengers. You probably have about, I don't know, six inches or more here to sit. Um, the only thing I do wish, I do wish that these seats. They're too, they're, they're too up and down, okay? So I, I wish that the seats went back a little bit more to give that passenger a little bit more room leaning back a little bit. Um, my buddy has, again, a 69 Mooney. He, his seats actually recline in the back. And when I sit back there, it's a lot more room. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's what you're getting. And I can go one more notch up. Um, and same through the passenger side. You don't sit all the way back. And of course, there's your mics for the back passengers. I can put my pillow back, but then again, you put the seats back. You know, when I when I get out, I put the seats all the way back. So, and that's what I do when I get out, so I can get out of the airplane. But any questions you have, and again, here's that uh, the vent for the outside. You turn that, and of course, the lights that I don't need really anymore. That's one other thing I really don't like about it. Those lights get really, really hot. Uh, a lot of guys are changing to LED, which is cool, but I don't need them anymore. Um, so everything lights up for me. The only thing I have to, I would like to get um, maybe next annual is something at night when I fly. I really can't see. I can see them, but not really. Something underneath here, some kind of light I would like to put so I can really see these um, uh, switches. Uh, but I know exactly what, what switch or what. Cause I, you know, had this plane for three and a half years, so I kind of know what every switch does. I really don't have to look at it to switch to, to know what switch to use. Okay, so we're gonna head back out of the airplane. Um, 
course you have your mixture I'm sorry you have your your props you have your mixture you have your throttle I get one of these new hopefully next annual cabin heat don't need that right now cabin vent and you have your carb um, heat and you have your parking brake and of course you have on this side you have your landing lights positioning lights um, anti-collision light um, and of course you have your repeato heat strobes radio master um, your electric fuel pump and of course your battery master so when you turn that on the, ma the battery master you know all the dynons this only this side will come on um, and the reason why just this side comes on is because this is the screen you want on when you're starting your airplane so it won't it won't how they wired it it won't have a problem like um, uh, like blowing out a, sc a, sc a screen because there's too much you know electric going through it when you first start the airplane up um, but the the other button the master radio is for this this side um, and then this in, this information this uh, the, uh, the Avidyne SL30 these this works with when I turn the radio master on um, so this can blow out golf bit if you start it up but this won't so and now that this is on I get all my information so when I start it I want to get to a thousand rpms you know make sure the oil pressure is uh, rise fuel pressure rise oil you know PSI is rising you know right away so now I'm a, I can start the airplane and look at all this stuff when I start it um, so I'm allowed to do that by just turning on the battery master these won't blow out in case there's a surge of some kind of electric surge and you turn it off and that'll, come, that'll turn off in about, I think, 30 seconds or so. Yeah, 30 seconds or so. And there's Fredo. So, folks, that's basically it for today. I'm going to go flying, um, but not... I don't think I'm going to go flying in my airplane today. Um, but we'll see what goes on. There's a couple guys coming to the airport this morning. Um, but I just, like I said, want to go, go a quick overview. If anybody has any questions about the Mooney... Um, Email me at pilotfun101 at gmail.com. I have no problems going over anything with you guys. And also, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. I have Instagram, if you can believe it. So, find me on that as well. And like always, folks, fly safe, be safe. And I'll see you guys next time.